The second potential energy we're going to talk about in dealing with our mechanical systems is elastic potential energy. And so that's the potential energy that's going to be built up when we have a mass moving around uh, attached to the end of a spring. Now that's also going to be related to the work done by the spring force as that mass moved around. And so again, let's start by reminding ourselves what we already know about the work done by the elastic force. So in which direction does the elastic force pull on the mass? Well, it always pulls the mass back towards equilibrium. So the spring force is always trying to restore the mass back to the equilibrium point. So again, the definition of the elastic potential energy is that it's equal to negative the work done by a spring. So if the spring's always trying to pull the mass back towards equilibrium, that means I will increase the elastic potential energy when I make the mass move away from equilibrium. In moving away from equilibrium, the spring does negative work because the displacement points in the opposite direction is the, is the spring force. So the spring does negative work. Negative times negative means I get a positive change in the elastic potential energy. On the other hand, if the mass moves back towards equilibrium, then I know the spring is doing positive work on the mass. Positive work terms times that negative sign gives me a negative change in the elastic potential energy, which means the elastic potential energy decreases when a mass moves towards equilibrium. So we had an equation to calculate the work done by a spring. And again, one of the ways that we wrote out that equation was that the work done by a spring is equal to negative one-half k, the spring constant, times x final squared minus x initial squared. So this is the final displacement of the mass from equilibrium. That gets squared minus the initial displacement of the mass from equilibrium. That gets squared. So here you can see in our drawing the initial displacement from equilibrium, how far was the spring stretched or compressed initially, the final displacement from equilibrium, how far was the spring stretched or, or compressed at the end. This equation told us that the spring does positive work as the mass moves towards equilibrium and negative work as the mass moves away. We've just said that the change in the elastic potential energy is equal to negative the work done by the spring and so the negative here is simply going to cancel out the negative that was sitting in that other equation those two go away and so I'm left with the change in the elastic potential energy is one half k x final squared minus x initial squared. It's the same equation it's just that minus sign is no longer out front. So this equation means as I move away from equilibrium just like in my picture the final displacement from equilibrium is larger than the initial displacement from equilibrium so when I take final squared minus initial squared that's a positive term and so I get an increase in the elastic potential energy for an object moving away from equilibrium. On the other hand if I've got a mass moving towards equilibrium then this initial term is larger than the final term when we square both and subtract in the right order I get something negative in my parentheses multiplied by positive k multiplied by a positive number so sure enough I get a decrease when the mass moves back towards equilibrium. Just like what we talked about with the gravitational potential energy, when we talk about the elastic potential energy, again, what we really mean is the elastic potential energy relative to the point where the elastic potential energy equals zero. So we need to know where our zero point is. And unlike in the gravitational case where we could pick that if we had a constant gravitational field, in the elastic case, we don't have a choice. It's set at equilibrium. So the elastic potential energy for this equation always equals zero when your mass is at equilibrium. So we know where the zero point is. So when we say the elastic potential energy then, we can calculate out what the elastic potential energy is using this equation where it's one half kx squared, where x again is, is what distance you've either stretched or compressed the spring. And again, the elastic potential energy and calculating it out this way is really always telling you the elastic potential energy relative to what it would be at equilibrium. One of the things to highlight with the gravitational potential energy we saw where that could be positive, that could be negative, that could be zero. The elastic potential energy can never be negative. So it can be zero if your object is at equilibrium. Right? Plug in zero, you get zero. But move in either the positive or negative direction 
both of those are squared the squared makes the sign go away and so one half kx squared is always a positive term regardless of what x is so you you cannot have negative elastic potential energies using this equation